Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. My name is Hallie and I'm so happy that you're here. Today's video has been requested by so many of you guys because I feel like every vlog my bookshelves look a little different because I'm constantly book shopping. So as people have noticed, a lot of you guys have requested that I do a bookshelf update. And at this point, it's just, I'm gonna do a physical TBR update because out of all of these, those are the ones I've read. One shelf worth. I clearly have a problem. Really quickly before I get into the video, I do want to say I think this is going to be the first video I upload after hitting 10,000 subscribers. That's absolutely crazy. I genuinely cannot believe we hit 10,000 already because I've said this I feel like so many times. That was my one year goal. Start taking it seriously in October. Fingers crossed by next October we'll manifest it, put it into the universe, put the work in, and you know, that was our goal. And to hit it like before the year even ends, that was like never in my wildest dreams. So I just wanted to really quickly, before I start the video, make sure to say thank you to everybody who has given me a chance and watched my videos. A lot of you have been commenting that you've been here since my very first video and like that just means so much to me that you stuck around from the beginning because you truly were like giving me a chance. I just, that means so much to me. I love this so much. I have been making videos since 2017. A lot of you guys don't know that. Well, I have all of them privated, but I've been making videos videos for almost five years and it's so cool to actually have people watching them now. <laughs> like, it's so cool. This is why I love when you guys comment. Like I always try and reply to you guys because it just means so much to me that you're taking time out of your day to watch my videos and leave comments and all of that. Like I just appreciate all of it so much. So I just wanted to really quickly say thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see what the new year holds. I have such a fun video idea planned to celebrate hitting 10,000 and I don't think that I've seen anyone else do this video so I'm really excited for you guys to see what I have planned to kind of celebrate and then just everything that next year will hold. I have so many fun plans and yeah I just wanted to say that really quickly before we get into the video because I'm so freaking grateful for all of you. Anyway, to get into the unhinged part of this video, which is honestly the entire thing, it's really bad. We need to talk about my physical TBR. The last time that I showed you guys all of the books that I own was my very first video. I had gone book shopping, like whatever, and I was like, yeah, like I wanna read these before I get any more books. Genuinely, I forgot I said that in that video. Like someone had commented, oh, I thought you weren't buying any more books. Like I see new ones on your shelves. And I literally went through the video and found the part where I said that. And I was like, hmm, wow. I really just said that and then deleted it from my memory. Like I just was like, so anyway, let's go shopping. <laughs> Needless to say, I have bought a few books. All I'm gonna say is that I know it's a problem. Two, I'm the type of person who when I decide I like something, I hyper fixate and um, you know, this is what comes of that so and third of all it just means more content for you guys so let's take this as a positive and the fourth thing I will say as well is that I have decided that I'm going on a book buying ban starting January either until my birthday in August or until I read at least like 70 percent of my TBR which after I'm done going through everything I'll kind of count up how many books I have and then figure out how much 70% would be so that I have like a goal but if I don't hit that goal by my birthday and I want to go book shopping by my birthday then I am going to be fine with that but this is kind of ridiculous and I'm at the point where I feel like when I go out book shopping anymore there's not even anything that I want to buy because I own so many options already it's unhinged let's get started <laughs> I actually want to go through all the books that I own in genres. Let me rearrange these real quick and then we will get started. I feel like I didn't truly realize how many books I owned until I'm like surrounded by them and trying to separate them into stacks because this is completely unhinged. Anyway, I think that I'm gonna go in order of romance to like romanticies into more plot-based fantasies into thriller, suspense, mystery. I feel like that's all one in my brain. I will have 
timestamps also if there's like a certain section that you are looking for i always have those in all my videos so you can just find whatever you want or you can sit here and watch the whole thing with me so we're gonna go ahead and start off with all of my romance books. The first series that I'm going to talk about that I have on my physical TBR is the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. I did pre-order the fifth book in this series. I just don't have it physically with me yet. So right now I just have Heartless, Powerless, and Reckless on my physical TBR, but I will have Hopeless as well. And I have already read the first book in the series, which is Lawless. I accidentally brought it down here with me. That's why it's over there. This series is a cowboy romance, which I did not think think that I would be into but after hearing so many people talk about it I was convinced to give it a try. I read Flawless and I actually ended up really liking it. It did take me a little bit longer to get into it because it was my first cowboy romance and I feel like the whole time I was kind of second guessing if I even like that but by the end of it I was convinced and I loved it and I love the characters and I am genuinely so excited to read the rest of these series and meet the rest of these characters and just get different stories. Essentially each one of the books follows a different brother from this family or like a family friend I believe. I don't think all of them are the brothers but all the brothers come from this ranchy family. Not all of them are cowboys. Some of them are bull riders. I think one of them is about a hockey player but they essentially either all are friends or family members and so they're all interconnected standalones which technically means you can read them individually but some of the characters from the books before will get like cameos in each of the books so that's all I know but I'm very very excited to get into the rest of the Chestnut Springs series. Honestly, I think I'm going to, because I did pre-order Hopeless, but I think I'm going to save the rest of the books that I have pre-ordered to just do a little section at the end of the video of all the books that I have pre-ordered. So I'm going to count them as being on my physical TBR because they will be coming here throughout the next year, but I have already purchased them. So I feel like that's not breaking my book buying ban because I didn't buy them after I started it. But I'll just include that section at the end of this video. We're moving on. The next book I have, I actually just recently picked up. It is is You Again by Kate Goldbeck. So I heard a bunch of people talking about this book in the fall because like the cover is just so cute and fall vibes, but I never really heard anyone talk about what it was about. Like I felt like the main draw was the cover. Like it's so cute and so fall, but I was never really interested in picking up the book because I didn't know what it was about obviously. And I had never taken the time to actually read the synopsis myself. But like a week ago I was in Barnes and I actually read the synopsis and it sounds so much more interesting than I thought it would so I ended up picking it up but it is essentially about Ari and Josh and they basically hate each other as soon as they meet and then they end up reconnecting years later and they bond over the fact that they share an ex so they essentially had both been sleeping with the same girl in the past and then whenever they re-meet they both bond over their like hatred for their ex. That's essentially all I know about the book but that is just such a like funny concept so I ended up picking it up. I don't know I might wait until the fall to read this as well because it is, like I said, very fall vibes. But I don't know. I'm just like very interested to read it. And like the cover is so cute. The next three books are actually part of a series. It is the Playing for Keep series by Becca Mack. I actually just ordered these from Waterstone. So these are the UK versions, but they're just so pretty. They're like watercolor. Listen, one thing about me, I'm weak for cute covers, okay? I don't know what it is. I mean, every book girly can relate to this, but like when I see a cute cover, I'm just like, the urge to resist is not there. However, the urge to buy it instantly there, you know? I am kind of sad though, because one of them came with the pages super bent up. So that's kind of depressing, but I just decided if I read it and I really like it, I will get a replacement copy. And if not, it doesn't really matter because you won't really see it if it's standing up on the shelf. So I believe all three of the books in this series are hockey romances. The first one is called Unravel Me. The second one, I absolutely hate the name of this book, Play With Me. Play with, play with. And then Consider Me. That is the three books in the Playing for Keeps series. And they just look so cute. Like, that's so cute. I love that. The next book series on my physical TBR is the Knock em Out series by Lucy Score. I don't know much about this series still. This is an extremely popular series. And that's the main reason that I picked these up. But I believe it's about a group of friends. And each book kind of details a different couple in the friend group. I'm pretty sure. That's all I know about that. But I have all three of the books in that series. 
series. Emily Henry obviously is a very popular and well-known romance author. This book is about this friend group and one of the couples in the friend group breaks up but none of the people in the friend group actually know that they are broken up and they go on a summer vacation every year to this cabin and this is the last year that they can take the vacation because the cabin is being sold so they decide to just suck it up and pretend to be dating for the last vacation. I also have book lovers. I don't actually remember <laughs> what it's about. I think it's about these two sisters that go on a vacation to this place that their favorite book is based off of and it's like big city girl falls in love with small town boy type of thing. Very excited to read that mainly because it is one of my friend's favorite books so I definitely want to read this. Honestly I kind of want to read all of these in the summer. I feel like they're all like summery vibey books. The next one is people we meet on vacation. This one I don't actually know what it's about. I mainly just got it because it is an Emily Henry book. And then beach read again I don't really know what this one is about. Listen, a lot of these, I'm not gonna have reasons. I just, I bought them. The next author that I will talk about, Hannah Grace, and I have Icebreaker and Wildfire. Icebreaker is obviously a hockey romance, as you can clearly tell from the cover. And then Wildfire, I believe, is about these two people that hook up and then expect to never see each other again. And then literally like a couple days later, they show up at this summer camp and they are both working at the summer camp and so then they have to be around each other at the summer camp and I believe in this one it's the guy falls for the girl first and so he like wants something more but she's like no like we were just hooking up. I could be completely wrong. That was completely a speculation. But both of those books have been extremely popular. I literally hear people talk about them so much. I feel like every, like whether you're on TikTok or YouTube, there's always somebody talking about those. So I am very excited to read those. The only other hockey romance that I've read is Behind the Net and that was a five star read for me. So I'm very excited to read another hockey romance and see if I like it as much as Behind the Net because that was just so cute. I really think that I like sports romances. So the next ones that I have are by Carly Fortune. Fortune? Fortune? Meet Me at the Lake and Every Summer After. I believe Meet Me at the Lake is like these people, they met when they were young and he wants her to meet him at the lake. I don't know. Oh, okay. They spent 24 hours with each other, but the timing was wrong. Oh, and then at 32, they reconnect. I don't know. I don't know. The next series is also extremely popular. The Magnolia Parks Universe series by Jessa Hastings. I don't know if this is the right order of the books, but I have Magnolia Parks and I do have the UK version for all of these and I have the original covers. I just think that they're so beautiful. I just like them so much better than the new covers. So I have Magnolia Parks, Magnolia Parks and the Long Way Home, Daisy Haight, and Daisy Hates and The Great Undoing. And honestly, I don't know what the Magnolia Parks books are about besides the fact that everyone says that it's essentially like Gossip Girl, but in the UK. And that was all I needed because I am a Gossip Girl girly. Like I love Gossip Girl. I watched the entire OG Gossip Girl like four times. The newer one, I absolutely love that, ate it up. And I did actually start listening to the first book the other day on audiobook, but I only made it a couple chapters in but I'm loving the vibe. Next, I have two books by Allie Hazelwood. I have Love Theoretically and Love on the Brain. Honestly, I wasn't going to get any Allie Hazelwood, but I've just heard so many people talk about how Allie Hazelwood writes such good romance. So I just picked two to try out. That way, if I'm ever looking for something romancy but a little bit different than I would normally read, I have these as options because I guess Allie Hazelwood specializes in writing like STEM romances, which again is not something that I feel like I would normally be interested in but honestly the original one that caught my attention was love theoretically it's about this girl whose job is like to fake date people like you can hire her to be your girlfriend essentially if you have like a family event or like somewhere to go where you don't want to be single or you want to like pretend like you are not single or whatever you can hire her to like be your girlfriend and I think that she actually falls for her client's brother essentially but I don't know for sure don't quote me on that 
that. I don't know. And then I ended up picking Love on the Brain because I read a couple pages of Love Theoretically and I was honestly vibing with it so hard already that I was like, okay, if I end up reading Love Theoretically and I love it, but I'm on a book buying ban, I want to have at least one other Allie Hazelwood book on hand. This is why I own so many books also because I use this logic and then I'm like, well, if this, then this, and if this, and this, and I want to have options and then like, and now we're where we are. But anyway, the next book I have is Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter. This is the only Lynn Painter book that I own. And honestly, this book just sounds so cute. I think it's about this girl who gets a text from a random number and it's like a spicy little text. And she's like, oh my God, like, who is this? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I must have the wrong number. That's Mr. Wrong Number. And they end up like going back and forth and like flirting with each other, which I feel like is just so cute. So I actually am really excited to read this. I'm really excited to see if I like her writing as well. Honestly, there's so many authors in here where I like, I just hear so much about them. And because I am a newer reader, like I don't know much. And so it just makes me so excited to read them for myself and see if I also like the writing and like the author. And it just like makes me so excited to like try it out for myself and see what I think. So I'm really excited to read this. The next little series that I have is actually by Abby Jimenez. I hear so many people talk about Abby Jimenez. I wanted to, again, like I said, just like try her out for myself and see what I think. This, I believe, is also interconnected standalone, so you could technically read these by themselves, but I wanted to have all three so I could read them in order because it just, like, in my brain, I have to read them in order. That's just... This is The Friend Zone, The Happily Ever After playlist, and Life's Too Short. Honestly, I've heard the most about The Happy Ever After playlist, and I feel like a lot of people read this one as a standalone, so I'm very interested to see if it's better reading the whole set or I don't know. I'm honestly really excited for these. The next book is Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren and how cute is this little cover? I think the original cover is like yellow with like ripped up paper which is also very cute. This one... How cute. So I think this is childhood friends to lovers. A lot of people love this book because I guess it's just very cozy, wholesome, cute, little giggly, kick your feet romance. I think that this will be the perfect little cozy romance if I'm craving like wholesome, cutie little vibes. So very excited for that. Oh, and I did forget to mention also another Lucy Score book by A Thread. This one again is a very popular book of hers. I don't really know what it's about. I started reading it like a couple months ago. I think it was in October. Um, I started it on my Kindle because it's on Kindle Limited, but I think I just like was not in the right mood for it. And also all of Lucy Score's books are like so thick. And so I ended up putting it down and I don't even remember what I read now because I didn't get far into it and I just wasn't into it. So yeah, I'm gonna move these stacks that I've already gone through before they fall off my bed. So one second. The next author that I have a couple of books from is Tessa Bailey. Me and my friends just love like spicy little romance books and this is one author that they like rave about. If you're like looking for a good little spicy book, like this is a good author to go to. So I have two little kind of like duology sets from her. The first one is called A Vine Mess and it is Secretly Yours and Unfortunately Yours. I genuinely know nothing about the premise of these books. The only thing I know about this book is that the main character Character's name is Hallie and it is spelt the same way as mine so I automatically kind of like loved this for that reason because what are the chances of that? I feel like the chances of that are so low. And then the next one is actually the Bellinger sisters. It happened one summer and hook, line, and sinker and I think that this is the more popular of some of the books from Tessa Bailey that you maybe would have seen. I feel like I haven't really seen anybody talking about secretly yours and unfortunately yours but it happened one summer especially I feel like kind of popped off and this is actually my bestie Sam's copy. So Sam, hi, I will read this soon. Um, as far as Colleen Hoover books, the only two on my physical TBR that I have as far as romance goes are It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us. The next one that I have is Things I Wanted to Say by Monica Murphy. This one is the first in a series. I think it's called the Lancaster Prepped series, but it is like a spicy... It says bully romance, so I don't know... <laughs> I don't know if this is like literally just a guy being in 
this whole for 500 pages. I don't know. <laughs> Things I wanted to say by Monica Murphy. The next two I feel like are such OG books. <laughs> like I feel like this is going to be such old news, but hey, it's never too late. <laughs> the first one is Punk 57. I have no idea. I honestly don't remember when I bought this. I just know that it's like extremely spicy and like kind of crazy and it's like an OG book talk book. That's literally all I know. So that's all I have to say about that one. The next one is Darling Venom by Parker S. Huntington. This one I remember reading the synopsis for and thinking that it sounded so actually heartbreaking and I'm not the type to want to read sad books. I feel like I use reading as a form of escapism. Life can just be so stressful and I obviously also have shared how I have anxiety and depression and just different things and so for me reading I like to read fun things or like fantasy and romance and thrillers you know and so I've never really like leaned towards a sad book. Can someone tell me if this made you cry? Will I cry? Am I gonna be broken inside? I don't know. The next romance on my TBR is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. Her aunt passes away and then she moves into her apartment and when she enters the apartment, it travels magically back in time seven years and there's a man living in her aunt's apartment. And I've heard a lot of people say that this is not, it's like a magical realism, but not in the way that you're gonna have to like learn magical concepts. It's just like, this is just something that the apartment does and it's more about the story of the characters and figuring out why he's there. I don't know. A lot of people have really, really raved about this book, so I am very excited to get into this. This, to me, kind of feels like a fall book. I don't know if it's because the yellow and stuff, but I don't know. I might end up reading it sooner because it just, it has such great reviews, and it does sound so interesting to me. I really, truly want to read this soon. The next one is The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. This is the first book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. I believe there's three books in the Dreamland Billionaire series, but essentially each book, it's kind of similar to like the Knock em Out series or I mean any of these series, honestly. I feel like a lot of romance series do that where it's like a family and then each of the books kind of goes through a different family member's stories, but that is basically what the series does too and it is about Rowan and Zai Zara. A lot of people love the series. A lot of people love Lauren Asher. Another book that I wanted to read from Lauren Asher is the Dirty Air series, but the, I mean, I think all of Lauren Asher's books are available on Kindle Unlimited, so that's why I haven't bought any of the other physical versions because I figured I can read them on Kindle Unlimited first, and then if I like them, then I'll buy the physical version, but I didn't think about that before I bought this one, and so now I just have the first one. Hopefully, I like it. Okay, on to the last romance book, and then I do have two dark romances. I think this is like a mafia romance to be honest but this is like the coolest book that I own and honestly I was not going to buy this because it's so pretty but it was so expensive but then it went on sale for Black Friday and honestly a lot of these I got on Black Friday on Amazon because they just had like such good deals on books. I feel like nowhere else actually had good Black Friday deals but then when it came to the books there was such good deals. This is My Dark Romeo. It's like a special edition and it comes in this little sleeve but what I love honestly is just this like are you kidding me the sprayed edges on this it's literally angels that's insane just look on the inside of this I'm sorry that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen like I'm I'm over here stuttering because this is just the prettiest thing and like the chapter pages I don't know this is just like the coolest book so when I went on sale I was like okay <laughs> you're coming home with me but yeah the, I guess this is a twist on Romeo and Juliet and that's literally all I know about it and that's all it took was it being this pretty and it being a twist on Romeo and Juliet also for like books like this like I know that this obviously is a very high quality case but like I've gotten a lot of box sets simply because it's cheaper that way not necessarily because I want it in the box and this is not a box set this is like a completely different story but like I feel like I would rather keep it on the shelf just like this and not in the box is it a crime if your books come with a box and then you don't want to put them in the box let me know because some of you might be upset with me 
Anyway, the last two romances that I have are dark romances. And honestly, I found these on BookTok. And I wasn't going to buy these because the snippets that I've seen were just so cray cray. Like, absolutely nuts what's in these books. Definitely check the trigger warnings on these because it's just insane. And that's all I have to say about that. I don't know when I will be reading these books because not only are they insane, but they're so thick. Okay, well, those are all of the romances on my physical TBR. Let's move on to romanticy and romance, shall we? Let me move the rest of these romance books over to my desk so I can have a little bit more room. The first books that I want to talk about is the Carval trilogy by Stephanie Garber. I read the Carval, the first book in the trilogy, but I have the last two books in that series on my TBR. It is Legendary and Finale. It basically is just a continuation on the first book following the two sisters in their journey through Carval. This series comes before the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, so I want to finish reading those two probably in the summer so that I can get to Once Upon a Broken Heart by the fall because I feel like it'll be the perfect time to read them. Talking about Once Upon a Broken Heart, I do own all three in that trilogy as well. And I do have the UK covers of these, which these are some of the prettiest covers that I own. So I genuinely hope that I like the series because these covers are just so pretty. So this is Once Upon a Broken Heart. This is the first book in that series. I don't know really anything about this series because I'm really anticipating loving it. And so I avoid anything about the series as much as I can besides what I had seen already obviously to persuade me into reading it. The second book which is The Ballad of Never After and then the third and final book in the trilogy which is A Curse for True Love and those are all by Stephanie Garber so I am very very excited to get to all of those. The next series which I believe is a romanticy is the Kingdom of the Wicked series. I recently found this through... Sarah Caroli and she really liked Kingdom of the Wicked and so I went ahead and bought the whole trilogy because one I'm a psycho and I feel like I have to own the whole trilogy obviously in case I like them so I have the rest of them but also I feel like I can't just read one like I have to read all of them so I really don't remember what they are about and I kind of just want to go into them blind. I have Kingdom of the Wicked, Kingdom of the Cursed, and then Kingdom of the Feared. And I don't know if that was the right order for them, but I own all three in that trilogy. And I don't think I said, this is by Carrie Meniscalco. I believe that's how you say it, but Kingdom of the Wicked. The next one has also been on my TBR multiple times and I somehow have not had time to read it. And I'm so upset about it because I want to read this so bad. I just like have not had time. How Does It Feel by Janine O'Reilly. I believe this has a second book coming out but if you have not seen this on tiktok i literally don't know how this book literally went viral with this girl that was just like in her kitchen just like screaming and crying about it when she finished it and she was like i am so unwell after reading this and genuinely i saw that tiktok she didn't tell me anything about it and i wanted to read it so bad so i have this i want to read this so bad i'm like so mad at myself but like i just have not had time so i really shouldn't be mad at myself i just want to read it so bad so hopefully i get to this one soon the next one is is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I also found this from Sarah Caroli. I feel like she is like the go-to person that I look to for fantasy book recs. But this one, I don't know, I kind of got confused about because like I've said multiple times, I am the type of person where if I'm going to start a book, I want to make sure it's not in the middle of a series. Like I want to read everything in order in my brain. Like I just have to read it in order or else it will bother me. And like there's a couple of these fantasy series where I have gotten kind of confused. Like I don't know if this is the the first book in this series or if there's something else that comes before this or if there's like how Akatar it's like Throne of Glass then Akatar then Crescent City like I don't know if this also has something like that if anyone knows can you please explain it to me I was very confused when I was trying to look up like if this is the first one that I should read um so help me 
please. The next one is The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This one I'm so excited about because it's about vampires and that's genuinely all I know about it but that's all it took because I am a OG Twilight girly. So this is about vampires. That's all I know. So I do own this and then also the novella which is Six Scorched Roses which a lot of people really 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 like this novella and I feel like a lot of people are really harsh on novellas because they're a lot shorter and so they don't contain as much content, obviously. So I'm very excited. The cover of this is absolutely beautiful, but one thing that makes me just so angry is like, this is the first book, the novella. Why? They're not even close to the same size. Why is the novella so freaking big? I don't understand. Did I like buy the wrong thing? Like, I don't know. And like, I have the first book in hardcover, so I want the novella to be hardcover, but it's like, it's so big and it's so thin to be so big. It's just the weirdest thing ever to me. Anyway, that's that. <laughs> the next one that I was kind of confused about is Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Meniscalco. I picked this up at Barnes simply because one day Mark and I were just randomly out and they had a table of these with like 70 stacked up on each other. I couldn't help but pay attention to it. You know, they were stacked up so high. And I was like, this is the cutest cover I have ever seen. I did a quick skim through of the synopsis and I was like, you know, it sounds interesting enough for me to justify buying it because the cover is also so cute. And so that's why I bought this. And since then, I still love the cover, but since then, I, this is another one that I am kind of confused on the world of this. And if this is the first book that I should even be reading in this world, or if there's something else I should read first or what comes after this, like genuinely confused about this one. So if you could also explain this to me in the comments somehow, please help me. Moving on, Dance of Thieves and Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. The covers for these are also just like so gorgeous. These two, again, I don't really know what they're about. I think I, these were one of the first books that I bought. So I really like, I bought so many books since then. I don't remember. These, the main thing that sticks out to me whenever I think about them is how much people talked about how beautifully written they are and how lyrical the writing is, which I feel like I have a new appreciation for after reading Powerless because to me, and again, this might just be like so good to me because I'm a new reader, but to me, Powerless was written so beautifully and like I just loved the way that simple things were described in such a detailed, really like a lyrical way. It was just, I loved that so much more than I ever would have thought. So that honestly made me really excited to read this duology because if a lot of people are saying how like lyrical and just beautifully written these are, I truly feel like I have a new appreciation for that writing style. So we're near the end of our fantasies which is kind of surprising because I feel like I have so many fantasies. The next duology that I have is the Six of Crows duology which so many people have commented that they want me to read this. So I have Six of Crows by Lee Dubargo and then Crooked Kingdom. And this, all I know is that it's about a heist and it's a group of, I believe, six outcasts who band together to pull off this heist. And I guess just like the details in this are just like absolutely insane and so well thought out. So I'm very, very, very interested to read these books. I kind of want to read them in the summer for some reason. I don't know why. The next one is an Olivia Blake book and it is one for my enemies. None of Olivia Blake's other books really sounded too intriguing to me, but I did pick this one up randomly one day. This is actually the only Olivia Blake book I think that I've picked up that I even seemed a little bit interested in. So I just grabbed it just in case I ever wanted to try an Olivia Blake book. And then if I end up liking it, I might try some of her other books. Maybe I'll end up liking things that I wouldn't expect, especially because again, I'm still a really new reader. I still want to try and keep an open mind and just like give things a chance because I might end up surprising myself and really love something that I don't expect myself loving. The next one is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. This is the second book in the Fourth Wing series. I think this is supposed to end up having like five books. I don't really want to say what this is about because I don't want to spoil it. It is the second in the series, but I have that. The next one is actually a recommendation from one of my friends, James. Jade City by Fonda Lee. I don't know what this is about, but he was absolutely raving over this. 
this and I trust his opinion. So I bought it. Another one that he actually recommended is Red Rising by Pierce Brown, which I know that this is an extremely popular series. I wasn't going to give it a chance. Like a lot of people said that it was very high fantasy and a lot of politics and really hard to understand. So that kind of like pushed me away from wanting to try it. But James read it and then he also sent me a bunch of TikToks of this guy that he follows that read it and he was just like absolutely crushed from reading this. But it did convince me to want to give it a try. So I'm definitely going to have to be like in a big fantasy mood I think to read this because it just feels daunting to me. I believe this series has like six or seven books but it can be split into two series and you can stop after reading the first three and it's technically like a complete finished set there but then you can keep going if you choose to. And then I actually have one more that he recommended me. Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I don't remember what this one <laughs> It's about. I'm so bad. I was really excited to read it and that's why I bought it. So um, I'm sure that will be really good when I get to it. Finishing up on Fantasies, Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. This one is about a girl and she has some power that is like hard for her to control or she needs to learn to control or something. And that's literally all I know about it. Very popular book. Very excited to get into the Shatter Me series. This is the only book in the Shatter Me series that I own though. So if I read it and like it, I will have to wait until my book buying ban is over to get farther into the series so that is kind of sad but honestly it's for my own good like I have too many books to read so the next book is Heir of Ashes by H.M. Darling. I don't really think I've ever seen anyone talk about this on YouTube. I honestly found this randomly one day at Barnes. I was just looking through the fantasy section because I was in a big fantasy mood and I wanted to try and find things on my own. Like because I am such a new reader, I feel like I get most of my book recommendations from social media and from other people telling me what is good because I just feel like I still don't really know what I'm looking for. So I saw this book sitting here, except the one in the front, like the cover was all bent up and like broken and gross so I went like five or six books back just to get a nice crispy copy to bring home with me and when I opened it up in the car I saw that it was signed and at the top it has a heart and it says love bites which I thought was so cool and cute like what are the chances of the book that I grabbed towards the back being signed so yeah I thought that was so cute the next one is hooked by Emily McIntyre honestly I was not going to buy this book I feel like I've seen so many people talk about it and for some reason I just like didn't want to read it. I don't know why, but it's essentially a series where the villains from each of the, like the classic fairy tale stories are turned into like the love interest. And so like it makes you like the villain. So obviously this would be about Captain Hook. So I was like, I just don't know like if that would be something I'm interested about. But the other day I was at the bookstore looking through the romance section and this girl and her friend came into the aisle and she was telling her friend how freaking good this book is. And because I had been going back and forth about it for months when they left the aisle I was like okay I'll take this as my sign and I'll try the book and then I went over there and they had taken the last copy and I was so sad about it because I was like man like of course the second that I decide to give the book a try there's no copies and then so I stayed in the aisle for like five more minutes and I was just looking around and her and her friend ended up coming back and putting the book back and choosing something else and so I got it and then I also have Never by Jessa Hastings. This cover is absolutely so beautiful. So 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 beautiful. This one I feel like already has kind of like low reviews because I know that there was some issues with her wording choices in the book and just like some other controversial things which I think that she has made some posts to address. Honestly I have not really looked into the tea that much so I don't really know what's going on I'm just here to have a good time not sure how I feel about reading that one now I kind of like pushed me away from wanting to get to that one but I do have it on my physical TBR so I wanted to include it lastly as far as fantasies go the rest of the books in the Harry Potter series if you have not seen my Harry Potter reading vlog genuinely go watch that it was such an interesting one I got a box set of all the hardcovers of Harry Potter off of Facebook marketplace and I've only read the first one I've seen all the movies love all the movies like since I was a kid just love the whole world reading the first book I just did not like it and I think obviously because it's like an actual children's book not even like YA like that is a kid's book and I didn't know that that plus the fact that I already know the entire plot like literally backwards because I could memorize the movies it just was not it for me so I don't know when I'll be in the mood to read these again because it genuinely put me into a slump 
so speaking of super long series i also have the entire hold on let me move this the entire throne of glass series on my physical tbr this i don't regret buying at all you know why because people love this so much and genuinely i feel like i'm going to love this so much because i've only made it like three chapters into assassin's blade so far because i decided to start with assassin's blade instead of throne of glass i did research this is the order i want to read it in so that's what i'm doing but i am like three chapters into assassin's blade and i already feel so encapsulated in this world so i really 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 have such high hopes for this entire universe so excited to get into these in the new year these are also not in the right order i don't know the order right now off the top of my head and i'm just not going to sit here and rearrange them but i have all the books in that series while we're on the topic of the Sarah J Mass universe, I also have the entire Akatar series. I am missing one book because my friend is borrowing it right now because we have a little shared library thing that we made. So she checked it out from my library, which is so freaking cute. Like it's so cute and fun to share books with your besties. But yes, so I am missing one of them, but I do have the rest of the books in the Akatar series. I'm planning on getting into Akatar as soon as I get through Throne of Glass, which I don't know when that will be because honestly a lot of the books in the throne of glass series are so thick i just don't know and then lastly in the sarah j mass universe i missed two of these but i do have them but lastly in the sarah j mass universe i have crescent city the house of earth and blood and then the house of sky and breath and these are barnes and noble special editions and i think that they're so beautiful i wasn't even gonna buy these yet because i have so many books to get through just to get to this part in the world of sarah j mass but then they released these covers and they're just like so pretty that i couldn't not that's so beautiful. So, oh, and I did forget to mention, I do also own the Barnes & Noble special edition of A Curse for True Love. Even though I have the UK version, originally I planned on getting the Barnes & Noble special edition for Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After, but then I realized after ordering this <laughs> that they no longer sell those, and so now I just have this and I don't know what to do with it. I don't know if I should give up on my dream of having all three of the Barnes & Noble special edition copies and just love my UK version because they are absolutely beautiful or if I should just keep this. I don't know, but I do have it if you ever see it on my shelf so you're not confused. I think that's all of the fantasies. So really quickly before I move on to thrillers because I only have one of these, I do also have A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara on my physical TBR. This is not a fantasy or a thriller but it is I believe just a literary fiction and I just wanted to include it because this is literally the only literary fiction book on my physical TBR and I don't know when I will be in the mood for this but I know that I need to like be in the mood for it. Also just be like mentally prepared because people say that you go through so much in this book and genuinely it will tear you apart so I'm a little scared of this one but I want to read it whenever the time is right. Okay, I can't believe we're finally on our last genre, but here we are. The first book that I wanna talk about that is on my physical TBR is The Perfect Marriage. A lot of these books I have already talked about in my original Becoming a Reader vlog, so I'm gonna keep these ones kind of shorter because I really haven't bought that many thrillers since then. I was like in a huge thriller mood when I first got into reading, but I honestly haven't read that many thrillers since October. So anyway, this one is about a husband and a wife. The wife is a lawyer, the husband is like struggling in his job and career. He is actually having an affair on his wife and his mistress is found dead and his wife has to like defend him or something, which someone had mentioned in the comments like how would that even be possible because it's actually illegal for you to like testify against your spouse in court if you're legally married. So I don't know how that would work. Like that's a very good point, but it sounded interesting. The next one is Five Survive by Holly Jackson. Honestly, I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Killjoy, the novella before A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Killjoy was a four and a half star for me and and Good Girl's Guide to Murder was a five-star read for me. I really just love Holly Jackson's writing style, so I'm very excited to read Five Survive. This, I believe, is about, like, five friends who go on a road trip, and, like, they start dying, obviously, and they want to survive. I don't know. That's all I know about it. I, I literally don't need to know anything else other than it's written by Holly Jackson because I love her writing so far. The next one is Too Late by Colleen Hoover. This one is a psychological suspense novel, but I also know that it is, like, spicy, I believe. This one was recommended to me by one of my 
my friends, Bailey. She said it was absolutely crazy. Definitely, I think, look up trigger warnings for this book uh, because she, she said it's like, it's nuts. Like, it's kind of unhinged. But sometimes I like them unhinged, you know? Sometimes I like them absolutely crazy. So, I also have Good Girl, Bad Blood and As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. These are the last two books in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. I'm obviously very, very, very excited to read these because, like I said, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder was such a good read for me. Like, genuinely such a five-star read. My reactions were, like, so visible. Honestly, if you haven't watched that video, my Reading Only Thrillers video, I really recommend checking that one out, too. I have such fond memories over all the videos that I've made so far. I don't know. I just love them all. I don't really want to say, like, what these are about because, obviously, they are later on in the trilogy, so I won't say anything, but I'm very excited to get to those. The next book I have on my TBR is The Housemaid's Secret. Honestly, I kind of contemplated returning this one because I read The Housemaid and I just like did not like it. It kind of like put me into a slump. Like that plus Harry Potter is like what did it for me that like sealed the deal. But I just was honestly kind of disappointed in the ending, but I think I just was expecting like so much more from the book and so that's why I felt disappointing. And then this kind of just felt like, is it just a copy and paste of the first book? Like I don't know and I don't know if I really want to take the time to find out. So I don't know. I'm keeping it on my shelves for a little longer just in case I am changing my mind one day and I want to give it a try. I have it to try it, but I really don't know realistically when I will be getting to that one. Also, these are in no order. Like I didn't even separate these ones by author because I am just getting tired. I have been talking for so long. It's literally like it's 2 19 in the morning already. I don't even know how it got this late. It was not this late when I started filming. I just have been procrastinating, going on my phone. I talk so much. My camera battery has died three times. My camera's also overheated one time and so that equals talking about books at two in the morning. The next book is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I don't really know what this one is about anymore. Honestly, so many of these thrillers I bought so long ago so I don't really remember the premise of a lot of them. Okay, so I guess the wife in, that lives in the house across the street goes missing and she suspects her husband and so she like watches them. I don't know. I don't know. The next one is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. This one sounds so interesting. This one is about a family who travels to this vacation house for their Nana's birthday and then at the strike of midnight every hour on the hour people go either missing or they die or something and they have to like reveal secrets about themselves and like bond and stuff like that to like get people to stop disappearing and dying I guess but I don't know this sounds so interesting to me though and I love this cover I think I literally said this in my other video too like I love this cover so much I feel like it just like is such a mood and like when I see this this is like such a good setting for this book the next one is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This one, I believe, is about a husband and a wife who win a trip together. I don't really remember, like, what goes wrong on the trip, but I just remember that it's, like, about a husband and a wife, and they are, like, hiding things from each other or lying to each other or, like, I don't know. Something is, like, not as it seems, and, like, that is the premise of this book. The next one is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. This one... Oh, you know what's so funny? I'm literally about to re repeat this for my first video, too, because I just did the exact same thing. There's like three highlighted sentences in here to give you just like a tiny little hint of what the book is about and it says, at 17 Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope, stabbed her father with a knife, took her mother's happy life. It wasn't me, Lenora said, but she's the only one not dead. So that's what the book is about and that was enough to intrigue me. This sounds so interesting plus the cover is so pretty. The next one is The Silent Patient by Alex Mike Mish, my, mm, mm, mm. Whenever I do pick up thrillers again, I feel like this will be the first thriller that I pick up because I feel like everybody read this book in 2020 or 2021 and recently a lot of people have been recommending this to me in the comments and stuff too. So it's kind of re-brought it to my attention and made me want to read it again. So I think definitely once I am in a thriller mood again, this will be the one that I start off with. It's about this girl who randomly one, one day comes home from work and just like kills her husband and then and after the day that she kills her husband, she just like never talks again. And so she goes into a psych ward. And I think that the whole book is kind of written from the psychiatrist who is like trying to figure out the reason why she's not talking anymore. I think that it has like diary entries from her too, either like past tense or present. I don't really remember, but this sounds super interesting. So I feel like I will definitely start with this whenever I get back into thrillers. The next one is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. This one, if I remember correctly, correctly is about this dad and son who go missing. 
and then the whole book is just trying to figure out like literally what happened to them i think i'm not 100 percent sure on that one but i think that's what that's about just bear with me it is so late and i don't know why i'm awake right now the next one is the night swim this is the one that the worker at half price books recommended for me he saw me in the thriller aisle and saw the books that i was holding on to and he went out of his way to find this and recommended it to me so i was like oh my god i love you so much i will read this it's about this kid who was well i guess he wasn't a kid i don't know it's about this guy who was like an olympic swimmer and he drowned and died which like obviously that doesn't check out like I really don't think you're gonna drown if you're swimming at the Olympics, you know, like mm, the chances of that happening are zero. Well, I mean, clearly they're not zero because it happened, but you know, whatever. That's all I know about this. That's all I remember about it, at least. And then the last two books on my physical TBR, as far as thrillers go, I can see right here that I forgot some, so just ignore those for a sec. But the last two books are both Lucy Foley books. This is The Paris Apartment, which I don't really remember what this was about. This was like super popular. I feel like last summer, summer-ish but um this one I don't know I think she's staying in her brother's apartment and he like goes missing or something or like creepy things start happening in the apartment I don't really remember the last one is the guest list by Lucy Foley this one I actually do remember a little bit more from I think that this is set at a wedding and there's like a storm that like keeps everyone at the wedding and then like murders start happening at the wedding and so you have to like figure out what is going on. I think this is like more of like a mystery thriller type thing, but I love this. And I think that the wedding is like on an island. Like you can kind of see where the setting is. Like, I don't know. I love books that have the setting on the cover because then it's like, I know exactly where to picture myself. And I, when I read, I watch it like a movie, like I full on, there's no world around me. Like I'm, I'm watching it. So seeing the location on the cover really does something for my brain. And I just love it so much. Those are all the thrillers. The last things that I clearly forgot to mention that I have are the Boys of Tommen series. There are four books in the series. I only have three of them and this is one that will be an exception on my book buying ban because they stopped selling these covers and I didn't realize that when I bought these. I found them on Amazon and so I bought the three of these and the third book in the series was out of stock but I just figured like oh I'll be able to just get it when it comes back in stock like no big deal. Then I started seeing everyone saying that they just like are not selling them anymore and I'm like well great what do I do because I have one two and four and I need number three so if I find the third book I'll be buying it even if I'm on a ban and please don't bully me about it <laughs> I'm gonna have to take my opportunity whenever I find it, okay? But I have Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh, and this is the discreet cover, and these are literally the thickest books ever. Like, first of all, it's the size of my head, 687 pages. What? Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. Then I have Keeping 13, the second book in the series. And then I have the fourth book in the series, which is Redeeming Six. And so the book that I'm missing is, I believe, called Keeping Six. So, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm not even done yet. Hold on. This is so bad. This is literally so bad because I have a couple books that I have pre ordered. Okay. Let me just go through these <laughs> so quack. So quack. I'm literally so tired, please help me. These are books that I have pre-ordered. I'm just gonna say the book, what day it comes out, and put the picture here because I am just so tired. First of all, I didn't pre-order this, but I bought it and it just is coming in the mail. <laughs> it's Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. It is a cowboy romance. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Now, these are the books that I have pre-ordered that when they come, just know I didn't break my book buying ban. I have already paid for these before my ban started and I've just been waiting for them to ship to me. I did not break the ban. Please don't bully me. I didn't break the ban, okay? First, The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, The Crowns of Naxia, book two. This will be released on June 4th. I know that this book is already out, but this is the hardback version to match the hardback version of the first book. The second book that I pre-ordered is Daydream, which is the Maple Hills book three that is part of the Icebreaker and Wildfire series by Hannah Grace. This will be released also on June 4th. The next one is Funny Story by Emily Henry. This will be released on April 23rd. Hopeless, which I did tell you guys about, that'll be released February 5th. Bride by Allie Hazelwood. This will be released February 6th. Magnolia Parks Into the Dark. This one, I know the Magnolia Parks Into the Dark is already out, but I ordered the UK OG cover version so that it will match my other ones. That one 
it says released February 13th. I don't really know how accurate that is, but that's what I'm going by. The last two are Swift and Saddled. That will be released March 5th. And then lastly, I have Reckless by Lauren Roberts, which I am like, I literally can't wait for that. I feel like time is going to move in slow motion until this book comes out. Reckless by Lauren Roberts will come out on July 2nd. Now we have officially reached the end. So this is how many books are on my physical TBR in total. And yes, I am including my pre-ordered books in this number. I don't know why it makes sense to my brain that way. I think all those will be delivered before August, which was when the ban will end. So that's how many books there are. And this is how many books I need to read to hit 70% of my physical TBR before August. And if not, which probably not because I'm not the world's fastest reader, then my ban will be over in August and we will go birthday book shopping. And until then, we are just going to enjoy reading either off of our physical TBR or on my Kindle. But I'm really going to prioritize reading off of my physical TBR because like I love buying books, but I don't want to buy them just for them to sit on my shelves. I want to actually end up reading and enjoying them. So I will not be putting any of these away tonight. I am so tired. I will probably make that a separate video. So if you guys want to see me organize my bookshelves, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss that when I post it. Also, if you guys want to see my special little video that I'm doing to celebrate 10,000 subscribers, make sure that you subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss that either. I think that's all I have to say. I can finally stop talking, wash my face, and go to sleep. I am literally dying inside. I am so tired. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.